Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Yeah? It's a lovely day. It's been raining all night. I have no leaks in my roof. And they're building something there. As soon as I get back in the old Peugeot, I'll put the 360 camera on and you can have a look. Let me know what's going on. It's a nice day for lighting. Lots of lovely low cloud. Very, very nice natural soft light. This is what we like. We don't like those super sunny days for photography. I'm on my way to work. Believe it or not. I certainly got the Protestant work ethic, me. Well, no, I say that. Well, actually, I do say that because I do actually work by default. That is my default mode, work. So, we had a nice day yesterday, the East Kent Plowing Match. Oh, almost no advertising, but it's just a reputation built up year on year amongst the people who attend. They sort of recommend they go every year, they bring their friends, their friends go, etc. And it's got to be quite a big event with absolutely no, there's no, uh, there's a bit of a sort of signage saying East Kent Plowing Match on such and such a date. It's not on a weekend, it was on a Wednesday. It's just a complete fluke that I happened to be off on the Wednesday. So we closed the practice and uh, took the staff. Always mindful of the £150 a year maximum that you can spend on staff entertainment. Although it wasn't really entertainment because uh, I spent all day boring them about uh, changes I was making to the budget. But uh, So I suppose technically it counts as CPD. But uh, it was only five quid to get in, so uh, you know. So we're not we're not going to go over our budget. I don't think this year. Not even with the Lion King. I don't think we are. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and there was a lot of people just ploughing. You know, but there was loads of other stuff. There were people selling flat caps, and there was a bit of uh, terrier racing and a wild uh, hawk display, and uh, just generally a nice little day out for people who live in the country and no townies at all because they're all working because who can go who can go to a country fair on a Wednesday the only people who don't care who laugh at the calendar ha 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 but um, anyway I had a shower thought this morning which is that uh, I can sort of lighten up a bit on the cryptocurrency side of things now because when I got into computers, I thought the whole thing was a race. There were new things coming out every month, every week, every day. I had to keep up, 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 up. It was a constant race to try and stay, you know, the leading edge of what was going on. And then I found out later that I didn't really need to. That most people uh, who've got a computer got uh, didn't never, never really open a word processor. <laughs> Apple proved that, didn't he? Old Steve Jobs. He realised that uh, there's a bunch of airheads who couldn't work a toaster and therefore would never ever be able to work a computer. Uh, you know, couldn't work a VHS. And uh, so he brought out a computer that a complete numpty could work. And uh, hence the uh, Apple brand was born. And then it went, they went further really with a sort of a, there's a market segmentation into um, uh, Two, two markets where, where where sort of what you could sort of generically call them producers and consumers, where you've got people who ring up the old uh, Leo Laporte and say, "What sort of computer do you recommend I buy?" And he says, "Well, what are you going to use it for?" And they all say the same thing. They all say, "Well, emails and uh, browsing the internet, you know, online shopping." To which his reply is, well, you don't need a computer. You know, you need a consumer device. It used to be an iPad, but it's probably now something like a Chromebook or something, you know? Something just, something that's so simple that uh, if, like, like the Chromebook, if you, if it doesn't work, and like somebody many years ago rang me up and said, I've deleted the internet, and I drove all the way to London to try and find out what the problem was, and it turned out he just deleted the icon for Internet Explorer off his desktop, and because uh, I was, uh, you know, I said to him, well, I've deleted the internet. Oh, really? What have you done? I don't know. It's just not there anymore. What do you mean it's not there anymore? I just don't know. It's just not there anymore. I mean, these are the sort of people who 
for whom the Apple Apple brand was created, and uh, they carry on in this vein. I'm surprised that more more of this sort of informed people in the computer space haven't realised this. That they have no intention of making a computer that's that's <laughs> receives any kind of critical acclaim, other than for the way that the hardware constantly improves, which allows these you know the numpties to do things even faster and even slimmer. Um, I mean, the latest example is a Bluetooth. Now, on a, on a, on the new iPhone, uh, you can turn the Bluetooth off, and basically, it connect disconnects all the Bluetooth devices, and it, it dims the thing and makes it look like it's turned the Bluetooth off. But then, uh, but it hasn't. The Bluetooth is still on. And even if you go into the control panel and turn the Bluetooth off at the hardware level, at five o'clock the next morning, it decides that uh, it knows better than you and turns it back on again. So, you know, you know that and. I can see why Apple do this. You know, people say, "Why do Apple do this? Why, why do they decide that they know better than you?" And that's because for 99% of their users, they do know better. You know, they, they don't want people ringing up or going in and making an appointment with an expert at an Apple store saying, "I, you know, I can't get Bluetooth on my phone. I just can't get Bluetooth." And they say, "Well, the problem is, at some point, you know, you you went into the settings and in, and accidentally turned it off." It, I've turned it back on for you. Problem solved, you know. I was in London. I don't know why London is so bad for computers, but I was in London the other day, and, and someone said to me, "You know, I'm going to need to buy a new computer uh, because my old computer's broken." But I thought I wondered if you could have a quick look at it and see see if you can fix it. So, and I'm thinking, why? Well, what's he got? Like uh, the screen's gone black, or? Uh, you know, something, something's, you know, they won't read the CD drive or something. But no, they'd lost the cursor. The little, you know, the mouse pad cursor, when you do the mouse pad, they couldn't find the cursor. And when they plugged the mouse in, it was all right. But when, but they, but the mouse pad stopped working. As far as, as far as they're concerned, the mouse pad stopped working. So what happened was, um, I just went, I looked at the computer model, which is on the front of the computer, and Google turned off the mouse pad and it says, yeah, that's done with F5 key. So, hey presto, one dab of the F5 key and uh, mouse pad back on, cursor back in use. No new computer required. One press of one key. These are people who should, be ha who should have apples. So anyway, where was I? Yeah, so the, the Bitcoin race do you have ideas in the shower? I tell you what. I think my big my big idea is to have a pencil and paper that you can stick in a shower that will be waterproof because I have so many good ideas in after I come out of the shower. And the reason is there's a physiological reason for this. And the reason is that uh, your uh, I, I I believe that when you're asleep, your brain is still churning away on on the sort of the deep problems. You know the intractable problems that. The sort of the things that you don't think that you're thinking about, but but your brain still is thinking about. Because when you know, all of a sudden you know you have a, a light bulb moment, where does that come from? It must come from some deep process that's been buried, but has suddenly been elevated to admin sysop level because you're, it's suddenly come up with a solution to something you've been thinking about for a long time. These are like you know, should I leave my wife type problems? You know, do I like pears? All these sort of things, and uh, I think what happens—the theory is that you get some sort of um, hot water on the back of your neck, which is where all your basal ganglions are, isn't it? Where all your deep uh, primeval uh, brainstem. Oh dear, I'm going to put a screwdriver through that beeper in a minute, I think, because it's just not. Perhaps it's perhaps it's adapted to the Japanese roads. They drive on the left, the Japanese. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's beeping about the cars coming to me on the wrong side of the road. Anyway, so what happens is the hot water will freeze up the, you know, it, the, uh, it unfreezes all the old long-term thinking, and so the idea pops into your head. But the trouble is, you have to, um, you have to sort of uh, really drag it up and make it conscious, because otherwise, by the time you've, uh, you know brushed your teeth and got dressed you'll have forgotten what it was 
and when you, and your brain because it's popped up with a solution it won't do it again it won't like you won't think of the same thing next the next time you're in the shower or ever again it'll just say look I gave you the answer to that it's not my fault you didn't write it down so anyway this deep insight I had this morning was relates to computers and uh, and the fact that uh, I was running 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 you know like a sprint and I turned around to realize that there's nobody behind me you know, there I am, a learning assembly uh, programming language, and, and most people can't even open a word processor. And that's because they got as far as they wanted to get, and then they stopped. And so you don't, you know, to be ahead of most people, you don't need to be that far ahead. You just, it's like, <laughs> it's like the old crocodile, isn't it? You don't need to outrun a crocodile, you just need to outrun the person who's behind you. And uh, with computers, there are a lot of people behind me, because I never stopped running. And what I'm doing is with the cryptocurrencies, I think I'm doing the same again. I'm running, 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 whereas I don't need to. You know? I already know more about cryptocurrencies than most people ever will, or ever want to. <laughs> so, uh, and the, not beeping at me. The test, uh, the test is uh, the mail merge on the computer side. If you can do a mail merge, then you can stop. Mail merge is a tremendously powerful thing. It's, it involves combining a list of uh, data with a list of um, with, with a stock letter. So, for example, you can write a letter and send it out to a group of people. All you need is the letter with all the, the blank placeholders and the list. And the computer then takes the first name off the list and prints the letter with their details. Then it takes the second name off the list, prints it with their details. And at the end of the uh, exercise you should have um, a pile of letters all perfectly addressed and like you know starting off dear Fred dear Joe dear Bill and that's the simplest application of a mail merge obviously you can use it for an awful lot of other things but I mean that's the thing that most people do and, um, and most people don't because if you ask the average sort of uh, probably the average office worker who's quite skilled on the office might be able to do it but the average Joe you know, the average person in the street wouldn't, you know, if you ask them to do a mail merge, they wouldn't know where to start or, or possibly even know what a mail merge is. So once you get up to mail merge standards, you know how to work a, uh, a spreadsheet and a word processor or a database and a word processor, then you're, you're there, you know, just stop. Unless you've got a specialist interest in, uh, in C++. And I think it's the same with crypto. Your... Uh, Your, um, you know, once you know the, the basics about the blockchain and everything, then you know the theory behind it, why it's why it is a breakthrough in computer technology, computer science. Then really, all you need to know is uh, think about what you're personally going to do about it. The the sort of the TLDR, as they say on Reddit, or the bottom line, or the summary, the ELI five, whatever you want to call it is that it's, it's in the same way as the internet was technology, it was information, wasn't it? The internet really was information for the masses. And then, um, and then this blockchain breakthrough basically introduced value. And information plus exchange of value equals commerce, equals business. So that's why the blockchain is an iteration of the internet. It's like a, it is like a a moth turning into a butterfly because you're adding the money. Your it is the internet of money, or money for the internet, which is a better way of putting it. And um, so, so you take uh, you take all the information, you add the commerce, you add, you add the uh, the exchange of value layer, and you end up with a with the internet of commerce, the internet of business. And as we all know, business is all about, um, you know, exchange of value, profit, etc. Profit equals uh, resources. Resources equals uh, sex, basically, equals passing on your genes. So, genetically, it's, uh, it fits in with the model, the Dawkins model, of why we all do what we do. But, uh, yeah, so just don't worry if you don't understand it. Just get, get into it to the extent. Just do, do the internet equivalent of email and um, web browsing. 
uh, which is probably just uh, download a, a Bitcoin wallet and uh, buy a few or buy a, buy a half of one or 10 pounds worth or something and just sort of work out how it works because uh, I mean, let's face it you did it with email didn't you 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 did it with a fax machine there was there was a time when you had to say right can somebody just explain to me quickly how to use this fax machine can somebody quickly explain to me how to set up an email address how to send and receive an email how to uh, perhaps create a website how to fill in a web form buy something online someone explained all that to you so get, just get someone to explain to you how to use a Bitcoin wallet. And uh, there you go, you're set. You don't need to be a genius. Anyway, that was this morning's shower moment. That and the East Kent plowing match, which I highly recommend to anybody who's got a Wednesday off who's in East Kent. No, uh, that's, the, that's the lesson really for dentistry today. No, really very little marketing, you know. Um, no... Uh, website on the website they, they've got the same website every year so they do not even change the website basically it just says these what these can plan matches blah 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 it's all done through um, a series of meetings committee they produce a program the program has all the prizes and then you know all the categories and the rules for all the competitions etc and it's been done that way because it's, it was done that way since the only people that enter were people with horses and then later the uh, steam engines and things like that. Both of which you can see at the Blair and Mash. But they've got a fantastic sense of community, you know. They are, they're very, very strongly grounded in the tradition and the, uh, the place, you know, and the community. Well, I've got to say, they're all pretty old. They are pretty old. I mean, and I'm saying this is someone who's nearly 60, <coughs> 50, sorry. Um, they are, they are... You know, these, the guys on the steam engines and that, you think, well, they can't have been born that old. They must have been younger at some point. But then when they were younger, probably nobody would let them anywhere near the steam engine. So they had to wait until somebody died. And then they finally, you know, in their 80s, got a chance to be the one on the steam engine at the fair. Uh, so it's... Uh, I don't know, you know, how how these every year there are fewer and fewer people every year as well. I mean, there are there's still a steam plow, uh, which is like a line plow, which goes between two steam engines up and down the field. And then uh, they've got a they've got two I think two horse two horses were drawing plows. Um, but it seems to me that like obviously every year there's less and less of it, you know. So um, it's going to be of historical interest only, really. I think there's not going to be there won't be a direct line. You know, someone's going to 3D print a, a horse-drawn plough in in 50 years' time and say, "Yeah, look, look, this is this is look at this. This is how it used to happen." Whereas, in fact, the the fact now that they're using using probably an instrument that was in use means that there's a direct line between between when it used to happen and now won't exist for much longer which is a shame I think you know but if they don't let the young guys have a go I don't see how the young guys can keep the tradition going so so I mean your dental practice is a community isn't it it's uh, it's uh, you know I mean it's interesting to think how you might form your dental practice into a community I think you know, you could say, oh, we'll send a newsletter. But, I mean, who really wants a newsletter? Who wants a newsletter from their barber every month? <laughs> I do. Actually, I need to get my hair cut desperately. Who, um, who wants uh, a newsletter from their grain grocer every month? You don't, do you? You, you, you want a special. I mean, we communicate with our patients three times a year. And that is basically when we're shut. We just write, we email them and tell them that we're going to be shut on such and such a date. And if you're on the dental plan, this is how you uh, need to uh, get in touch. And if you're not on the dental plan, then um, this is this is what you do. Otherwise, you know, I don't know what they do. Actually. Oh no, we we usually have a like. A, I'm going to go past the places. Watch this. I'm going to go to the petrol station. Yeah. 
That's because I don't start till 9.45. This guy rang me up this morning and he said, oh, I don't know, eight o'clock, I think, no, eight o'clock. His appointment was at 9.45. And he said, oh, I don't feel so well. I've had a bad night, I haven't had much sleep. It's like to reschedule for my appointment for tomorrow. Which is, you know, there's, there's two ways you can go with that. You can either say, look, I'm sorry, we're all set up to see you this morning and there's, there's no chance that we can get another patient in. Therefore, I don't think we can cancel at this at this point. It's not really possible to cancel. In which case, then he'll then either say, well, in that case, I'll come in, which is what they always do. Or he'll say, well, I'm sorry, but it's, it's absolutely no, no way I can come in, you know. Um, and I suspect he was one of the ones who probably could have come in. Because, you know, the ones who can't come in are the ones who are in tears because their father's died or something. They're... they're, they're uh, but we, you know, we have this constant tussle with people about who should bear the financial loss if they find that they can't come in at less than 24 hours notice. And uh, they all uh, ring up and as if they don't expect to be held to the, the terms and conditions which are clearly, you know, on the website, in all the printed material and, and in every email that we send out. So... Anyway, I've, um, I've reshouldered him for tomorrow because we've got a space and it's no biggie and he hasn't done it before, so I'll give him a, give him a, a mulligan on this occasion. Right, here we are. Okay, well, you have a nice day and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.